and this time we get a view of it with the sandstorm. So I'm a little, uh, I, I managed to find a couple of the buried lock chests. They seem easy, easier to find in this section of the map. But look, you just can't see anything. You can't see these massive, you can't see how this is so different to the sandstormy area, you know, down in regular dry top where it was much more deserty. I guess this is pretty deserty too, but you get my, you get my drift. One thing I was going to mention about these Maguma, they're just called like Maguma Lancer, Maguma Protect Protector, and so on. Uh, they are actually using very similar nom nomenclature as the centaurs of the first game we're here. Though I do consider the centaurs of the first game that we're here were also hostile to us. Ah, and these ones are not. So here's an example of, you know, speeding through the valleys, reaching the oasis where the sandstorm subsides. And now that we're back, you'll notice most of the enemies have respawned, but I deal with things a little bit more caref carefully here. The more gem in general take a while to kill. Um, I won't be giving you commentary the whole way through it, you guys can just sort of experience this. But where we're currently stood as well is a terrible place for sandstorms as you'll see. I'll walk forward in a second. And then this lovely little area here that I wanted a really good view of just becomes icky and horrible. And I don't get a good view of it for you guys for a while. It will be in the video, but um, it'll be a little while. I found with these vile thrashes that it says they're vulnerable, well, you know, from behind. But I tend to find I just can't do damage to them unless they're doing their spin attack. Anyway, that's a more deft, proper way of killing them. The uh, the wolves here, they are more dangerous. That big leap attack. Uh, on this tune, I got like two shot by it at one point. So <laughs> be careful of them. I always open up by blinding both of them with a signet of air, as you can see. Um, and there's also some other more gem I don't think you'll see here. They're another variety of enemy. They are big thorns. They're like more gem thorns. They're the most dangerous ones that I seem to have found so far. So I sort of just chose here to stay at the entrance where there was no sandstorm to finish the event instead of pushing in. Partly because I knew I could kill enemies on spawn without dying, but also partly because um, I didn't want to obscure the vision. Down below uh, there's a lot of Mordrum, lots of wolves, and they just do too much damage. Veterans. As ever with the dynamic event system, I think it's a shame that some players won't get this full experience when they're exploring the map. They'll just come here and they'll see the fruits of other people's labor without even realizing that they are the fruits of other people's labor. They'll get through quicker and they'll, they'll re it's basically missed content. Especially for those of us who are only playing the patch for a short period of time and they're not playing the game very much. Which is exactly what I did last patch. I did not play the last patch very much at all. And I have no doubt I'm missing out on a lot of things there. Feel the fires of Balthazar. Now you find this as well with these thrashes, sometimes they get caught on terrain. 
I had to rely on that at the prosperity attack, but you might be better off just letting them free because then that's going to give you more opportunity to damage them instead of just seeing zeros constantly until they use their animation. There you go, so that's the event done. You'll notice this new weird glowing area has appeared. Um, and it says Vine Bridge there, so I was like, oh, we throw a seed. But no sooner as I realised that and I wanted to go get one, this script comes along and throws the seed for me. I can only assume that it needs more than one seed later, maybe. Like, uh, when, when the event scales up. But uh, that's something that the players could have done that an NPC just did for me. And now, sadly, we go into the sandstorm. I was really hoping we could get above the sandstorm here. Look down on one, that would be really awesome. But uh, the sandstorm rages on. And you'll notice we've been going higher and higher and higher now. Now we finally get our new waypoint, the Vine Bridge waypoint. I'll give you guys a better view of this area when the sandstorm subsides in five minutes. Uh, but we push into another whole chunk. You know, I was even expecting sort of at this point, considering everywhere we uh, had explored, remembering the cave as well in particular. That's one of the vines I was talking about, by the way. I was expecting this to be the, uh, you know, maybe towards the end of the patch. Like, in if, we, if you were comparing it to the original map that came out. But no, I'd say we're only about... We've only seen half of the new areas that have been added so far. Maybe slightly over. This is just me contemplating what I want to do because it, it feels like there's a lot of places to go, a lot to see. This event up ahead, you will recognise, is basically a copy-paste of one of the ones we had down below. I'll get Lightning Hammer off my bar any time now, don't worry. So, you want to kill all the little thorns so that when you kill the big thorn, he doesn't, you know, eat from their health. I just suicide bomb them. Um, it seems crazy, but you kill stuff so quickly with Lava Tomb on. <laughs> Lava Tomb has made me such a bad player in this game. It's so funny. So yeah, uh, you know, I just wipe them out like that. No, not a problem at all. Even though I die there again, it's just more damage that comes down. And the thorns open up, opening the way. Again, another event people could miss out on. More geodes for me though, and Silk Sand on an account I'll never use them for. So, uh, what looks to be the component of a larger machine of a sewer and design lies uh, out here in the sands. And uh, you'll realise in the trailer for this patch, they showed a giant. Um, and people speculated that it had just been added to the regular area of Dry Top because you could see Zephyrite wreckage. Well, if you pay attention to my minimap right now, and you think about the trajectory of the Zephyrite fleet you'll realize actually there's another crash site. We found the first crash site before, but this is just a bit further along where we couldn't get before because the cliffs were too high. We're now very high up, right? We're in the highlands. It's a big cliff separating where we are right now on these higher plains from the ones just very nearby to the right of us. But uh, it turns out other Zephyrites crashed up here on these cliffs, uh, disconnected from everyone else. Further, there's another small centaur outpost here. And here's one of the Zephyrites from the second crash site talking about the uh, the uh, centaurs. Uh, I think this was quite cleverly done because this uh, allows the devs to continue having NPCs for us to talk to um, d despite us going into, you know, completely uh, abandoned areas that not many people have tra traveled through or for a long time. So anyway, it's, it's also mechanically an opportunity here for me to uh, repair my stuff. There's not another Asura looking for Ambrite insects or anything here. Just in the original one. I also found it quite striking how all of the centaur... So here, a sandstorm's raging. It's going to completely destroy this vista. Another great example of how it ruins stuff. Look at this. Oh, what a great vista. I'll come back to it later so you guys can see it better. Um, but I find it I find it quite cool how well the centaurs, their uh, buildings and so forth, actually meld into the environments here. You know, they are literally just the same as the ones we used to see out in, uh, in Crichton areas. But they just seem to fit. I could outrun a centaur. <laughs> and there you'll see the giant. So this is what we were seeing in the trailer. This second Zephyrite wreck and then the giant. Now, uh, this is somewhere where they've expanded on the sandstorm mechanic. That giant is a legendary mob. He's big and he is dangerous. But he will only appear here while the sandstorm's going on. So, for all of its faults, at the very least, I managed to get footage of all the areas on the patch with a sandstorm and without a sandstorm. 
totally on purpose, I assure you guys. But it does have a mechanical change, this legendary mob that appears here. Uh, the, the, the original bit of the map that they added was actually pretty good for champions, right? Uh, I noticed towards the end of the week there was a lot of talk in map chat. People were saying, oh, here, you know, this is the champion rotation we should be doing and stuff like that. Which I don't think is too much of a negative thing. But here we got a legendary mob. Very dangerous. I'm curious to see at live. Obviously, as a solo player, I'm not going to be able to kill this guy. Uh, but I'm curious about when the patch goes live, how people are going to take to killing this guy. Is it every time a sandstorm comes up, people are like, all right, let's get to the giant. Let's do it. You'll notice he is his own event, obviously. All champions and legendary mobs in Guild Wars 2 are their own events now. And presumably with better rewards for killing him. Uh, the sandstorm's going to dissipate in 55 seconds. So, I'm not sure what the giant is doing at this point, okay? I'm thinking just, there's another look chest. I'm thinking to myself, maybe he's just passive. Most giants, you know, the, the risen giants in particular, you know, they're very slow at least. So, they probably won't kill you. And uh, I just get one shot for going way too close to it. By the time I come back, the sandstorm will have gone and he'll disappear with it. I don't know how he despawns, probably just on the spot. One thing I think Guild Wars 2 still struggles with and could do much better at is when um, enemies like spawn into places and despawn. I'm deliberately not talking about the living world, the, you know, the personal story style stuff for this patch, but they suffer from that problem here still. You know, where stuff is just randomly appearing out of nowhere uh, as it spawns. They could make more effort to have it spawn in just like a cave or something and then walk out of the cave just to maintain that illusion. Have the giant walk out of a cave that you can't enter as a player and then walk back in when the sandstorm goes away if you have to. Anyway, so now that the sandstorm is over, you'll see the where we built the bridge over. You'll see the old oasis back there. I don't go down and explore, but there's a bunch of canyon spiders there. Wouldn't be surprised if there's a lost coin. Probably a champion spider would spawn that there at some point. Just a, a hunch. Over on the left is an area I never explored before, but it, you'll see it gives you a, like this amazing vantage over the oasis that we had before. So you can get really high up on the cliffs there. Could be more exploration. I didn't spend much time. Where my mouse is over there as well. That looks like a, some kind of hidden place. More Ze uh, Zephyrite Rex to the south. Really high up. That isn't playable. It seems to be a hint that next time it will be playable. But uh, for now, you can't get all the way up there. It looks like we're just climbing and climbing and climbing slowly. It's the theme of this match. But uh, yeah, this is this area. Now, uh, the dust mites are gone. The uh, worms have appeared here now. So that's the... Uh, Fauna? Is it Fauna, fauna that's going to be on the uh, the fields now? I'll return to that vista so that you guys can see it. You can see a bit more of the Zephyrite's Rex. And the Inquest have built something here too. There is a bit more Inquest presence here. I just want to be able to talk to the Inquest properly and see what they're doing in this area because they've clearly been here longer than us. No more than us. Hopefully in future patches they'll elaborate on a bit more. Because, uh, I mean, this patch does have content here, obviously. Like, in a weird way, we are doing Living World story right now because it's just to explore the map at the start. We're still getting all of these points of interest. But uh, then it quickly expands beyond this map. As you may have seen in the trailer, there is stuff in this patch that is not in Dry Top. So, yeah, you can see that's actually of Inquest design. There's some cool events there, which we'll get to in a moment. At first, I think maybe I can climb up by using a crystal of some kind, you know, leap up. It's not going to happen, but I do find some NPCs, some Zephyrites. They don't really say anything much more interesting than the original Zephyrites did. In fact, they barely even uh, talk about the fact that their ship has crashed. Do they even know that there's another one crashed nearby? One of them does say, oh, we don't know how many people go out safely, which makes me think we'll find more wreckages later on. Don't forget, this is where the Master of Peace will have fled through to. I love that big archway. I barely look at it in the video, but there's a big, like, Mesa-type archway behind me right now. Way up into the sky. Looks very awesome. Like, if I tilted my camera up right now. You can see there's a cave over there on the left. Um, and there's an event here. So, this is where I was talking about as well, where it felt like I got a quest. I went to the Centaur Village. They told me about a golem. Uh, guarding a cave and now I walk over and there he is. Turns out this event does cycle very quickly And I can see that that's where the story is trying to take me to Like some cave out here 
So uh, we need to kill this uh, pretty dangerous mob. I believe he's actually a champion. So it's my job to solo a champion here. Uh, and he is a challenge. I actually resort to using um, some like cash shop boosters here. <laughs> like a regen booster, a damage booster, and a, an armor booster. At first I think, okay, there's all these turrets. So let's just deal with the turrets, shall we? Don't want to go into that chasm, try and fight a boss with a ton of turrets around me too. But uh, before I've even got a third of the health of the second turret down, you notice the one on the left has respawned. So I ask, why are we even given the opportunity to break these things if they're just going to respawn them so quickly? Um, maybe there's a reason. But here you go. Oh, no, he's not a champion. He's just a veteran. But he is dangerous. You see, he's a light-infused golem. Uh, and what this means is he's actually using Zephyrite crystals and stuff like the Inquest seem to have... Giving him some very cool abilities. So there you saw he threw something, which I dodged. But then it became like a mini black hole that sucked me in and did a ton of damage. There he's quite u clearly using like the Zephyrite skill too. He has a big uh, nuke attack that pulses massive damage near him. That attack there reminds me a lot of some of the loopy mechanics. Um, and for the record, I think I actually do very well dodging his attacks and uh, surviving here on the first attempt. He's got a laser thing though that has almost no tail. So the, that, hat, that fist was fine. But there's a laser attack that he casts on me every now and then. That was also fine. I should blind him right now, though. There you go. Uh, he hits me with this, but I think I die now. And that's the, the one attack that kind of really irritates me. Um, there you go. He just sort of shoots you. It's like, oh, sorry, you're out of stun breaks. I did okay on the damage there. Uh, I'll have multiple attempts on this guy, for the record. But uh, we did get a new waypoint, obviously, the vine one, so... I mean, imagine dying there and going all the way back to the centaur area. That would be frustrating, you know? I think they're just on the edge of frustrating here. Well, no, they're not just on the edge. They're clean away from frustrating, but they've made it more fun, you know? There is a point where too few waypoints is going to annoy people. But I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big advocate for this. I think uh, the less waypoints you have, the more time people have to explore the world and experience the world. And uh, that can only be a good thing, especially in a game like this where you have the dynamic events that change your experience as you're wandering through each time. So this time I have a bit of a detour instead of going back to that golem. I decide, yeah, I'm going to try and climb up. Let's do it. And I happen across this event um, with this uh, inquest golem that's bringing crystals into this machine. I think he's supposed to be undoing your progress, but he doesn't do it very well. But here you'll see there's lots of new these new tails. There's a, a, a single place you can pick stuff up from there. So we're being shot at by... Are we being shot at by cannons? Or is this just energy, loose energy flying everywhere? The whole point of this is you grab a crystal and then you charge the machine. There I fall off like a dummy because I was in the wrong attunement. That's like one newbie 101 mistake to make. But I uh, will ignore I made it. So uh, yeah, you've basically just got to keep running these crystals in as fast as you can to charge it up. And then that will trigger another event, which allows you to climb even higher. There's also a lost coin here. I think I get five lost coins as I'm exploring this map. Obviously not all of them. This isn't a completionist run. I do basically get map completion, but I mean, who cares about that at this point, right? I get all the skill points. I get all the vistas. That's all there really is. And the points of interest. And there I learned the hard way that some of this terrain is a bit harder to jump over than it may first seem. I think it's because, as an Asura, you're used to being able to make jumps that are taller than your character. So when you go to play a human, and one that's still fairly small, you still you still have that mentality. You're like, yeah, that's fine, I can make that jump. And then you realise, oh wait, I'm much bigger now, and the, the height I can jump hasn't changed. <laughs> Again, one of the main things you think about, this might feel slightly lengthy to you guys, but one of the main things you're going to want to think about with stuff like this is 
doing it with multiple people. If if they scale correctly, then it should drop the the duration a little bit because you should feel rewarded for playing with someone else, and that should mean you get to complete events slightly quicker. So now that we've done that, uh, it will create this holographic bridge here and put me into an event where I have to kill a champion. So I can't kill the champion, so I don't get to complete this event. I don't know whether killing the champion triggers something even better up ahead. Um, but yeah, I quite like that they use some new textured platforms here as well. I figured straight away that I'd need some uh, stability to do this. Uh, but I couldn't swap it because I was holding one of the aspects. And uh, pretty much the fact that I saw it was a champion, I sort of realised, you know, what, it's game over. And then he knocked me off anyway. Uh, so that'll be interesting, definitely when it goes live. I'm looking forward to playing this with some people. Seeing what happens when you manage to kill him. But that's uh, like a small chain of events that can go on in here. Don't appear while the sand storms up, as far as I can tell. Uh, and yeah, we, we still haven't seen everything. I'm going to attempt to kill the light-infused golem again now. There's still another region of the map, would you believe it? Uh, I get really annoyed here, actually. The, the, the inquest just will not stop throwing grenades at me. Do you see this? It's so annoying. But uh, I also demonstrate to everyone the power of Lava Tomb, which is the reason why I run this skill so much, this trait. Look, I'm badly geared right now, okay, may I remind you? And I managed 100 to 0 that inquest from, uh, from downstate. So we'll try the uh, Light Infused Golem again. Earlier on in the patch, we find a steam creature's head. And uh, it would appear that the one next to us right now, the decapitated one, is where the head came from, apparently. See here, I think I have every right to beat him. I came much more prepared. I had the boosters on and I had Glyph of Storms. Now, I didn't use my skills very well, so I played worse here. But I think I had every right to kill him. I had everything I needed. Um, it's just that damn laser attack. It's like, what are you supposed to do about that thing? And see, you just get sniped out. Um, so, yeah. I could outrun a centaur. Uh, here I wonder, hey, maybe can I get a bit higher up? Because the map seems to show that there's going to be something there at some point. I'm also looking up the cliffs to see if there's any Easter eggs. I don't find anything... Um, but it definitely looks like next patch, it will be that li little bit there. I will uh, show the map towards the end of the tour. And uh, you'll get a good feeling for how much of Dry Top we've explored. I'd say we've got maybe a third of the full map left before they open up a new map, maybe in two patches time. So there we go. Let's go for another round. So there, I mean, that's pretty brutal when I'm casting a Meteor Shower, but he uses the big nuke thing. But luckily for me, he now gra grabs aggro on my guy. And I keep him blind. So the fire elemental survives on a tiny bit of health, and that's uh, very useful. Summon the power of the storm. And despite all of his lame evades, I managed to get the kill finally. Pretty rough, but we get it. You have to kill him there. You can't enter this cave to the south without uh, killing him because the doors will be shut. You see that despawns all of the turrets also. You also see how far away from the turrets we are now. And uh, we come to a very interesting area here. Which is where the story is trying to lead me to, to uh, also. Now, it's going to give you a story instance. I will not be entering it. Don't worry. There is, as I say, no, we're not going to spoil anything. So that's sort of, you know, just how the, the game guides you through the map without actually having any uh, story content in it. 
But check it out. So we're now in this giant cave. Again, something we saw in the trailer. Um, I'll, I'll refrain from talking about the cave just because it could be spoilerish. But there is an area on one end of the cave that you don't enter in the story. At least uh, as much of the story as I've played so far. There is a, a vista in here which we can enjoy. There's a dynamic event in here, as you can see, uh, to clear the area out of Mo Modrum. I decided not to do this. This was the first one I thought, do you know what, maybe not, because, uh, I mean, they tend to take a while to do alone. I am, though, curious how it would change the state of this place if they were all cleared out. Uh, you'll see there's a lot of, like, lab equipment or things, you know, you hastily throw together in here. Crates. There's uh, Some of it either is even interactable. One of the things in here is, like, a note from uh, some guy at the Dermond Priory. I don't know whether it's meant to have been stolen from him or what. But here you'll see... Uh, um, it's sort of... There's some extra lore about what Scarlet's been doing and uh, before she died. I'll say one thing about this patch. Um, it does make Scarlet... There you go. See, two of them jumped to me. And I took all that damage. Almost got one shot. Well, two shot. They're very dangerous. You've got to be careful. And that's why I like Signet of Air because I can blind them and... Uh, this definitely is like a kamikaze spec. <laughs> oh, you died? It doesn't matter. You'll rally. Wouldn't have been very good while the uh, armor repairs weren't free. This, I just had to go touch that goo stuff and see what it was. Um, but yeah, up here is a big empty chasm. With a point of interest, the most easily you can get so far in Dry Top quite low down too. I do check the map as well because I it's playing music right now that I thought was really cool from the first game of when you're in the Tarnished Coast in Eye of the North and I thought that was awesome. It really fits in this cave. They definitely did that like on purpose. I really enjoyed it. Um, but uh, but yeah, I wanted to see if where we were currently considered in the depths of Tyria or not and it's not the depths of Tyria. It's still just regular Tyria but still. By interacting with that console we actually created a steam creature which I just killed. And now I can't interact with it again. I wonder if there's something special you can do there. But in this room... Ah, here's the last thing from the trailer. The point of interest is called Omad's Machine. So Omad's Machine being the device Omad created to allow Scarlet to sort of inspect... It, basically, what she claimed she saw the entire Eternal Alchemy. After she came out, she uh, killed Omad with, with uh, vines. She had a vision of the pale tree being strangled out by thorns. We're seeing a lot of things being strangled out by thorns in this patch. And as Mordremoth comes closer into the story. Um, but yeah, so a really interesting cave. But there's actually not much in there to do. I'm guessing there's probably a story instance in here at some point. I couldn't play the entire story because my client... I probably mentioned this in another video. My client keeps crashing in a certain place. So, But yeah, but yeah so that place looks really cool. Uh, and there is one more thing on the other side of this cave, all the way down the other end. Now, arena net are usually pretty good for invisible walls. Here, they do something kind of weird. Um, I don't mind at all. Invisible walls aren't a pet peeve of mine. I'd rather just have a straight-up invisible wall than some stupid excuse like a crate in the way that stops you traveling further. Though, I do think there's a certain flair you can get from that. We already examined that stuff. That looks like there was a, a plant next to me that looked like it would have had a seed pod in it for me. Uh, and I, this is why I wonder, maybe if you complete this event, maybe seed pods will spawn. Or we have to be something we'll have to check out on live. But I mean, even this cave, the uh, the textures on the walls, the, the shape of it, it's not something we've seen before. We've been in caves and guild walls, obviously we have been. But this, just the scope of it as well, the size of the cave, it's all very different to what we're used to. They've basically said, yeah, we're not really going to be using, reusing many assets. We want this to feel alien and new, and they've done well in that. So here's the, the notebook. Scholar Adele. What 
significance that has to the rest of the story, I don't know at the moment. And now I have the challenge of getting past these guys, trying to get the skill challenge without having to fight, because I'm sick of fighting. <laughs> so uh, I give it a shot here, hoping Arcane Shield will cover me. And of course it doesn't. This is that thing I was talking about where they get stuck on the wall. And now I haven't played this patch a lot, but I've seen this behavior a lot already myself. So uh, maybe it'll be something that eventually gets patched or something. I doubt it. It'll probably just be a quirk about them. And now I try, but there's a tangle route. There's a route here. But luckily I managed to get the blind with uh, Signal of Air off. Not that they even attacked, actually. And there you go. That's actually the last skill challenge in the area. I think it's a fitting place for a skill challenge, considering the magical nature of the cave we're in. But again, they're just kind of boring, you know? Um, but obviously now it looks like there's more of the cave we could explore behind this like honeycomb lattice type thing here. You should just be able to walk through, right? But uh, you can't. Um, so that's as far as we get to go in this patch. No doubt there'll be extra stuff in Dry Top later on. Um, and maybe we'll be able to go deeper in that way as well as further west and further, further higher up. Um, but yeah, so this is the cave. And this is pretty much the end. There is one final thing. There have been some script in the area. And... Uh, some of them, you may have even caught the dialogue earlier, one of them was talking about their queen. Uh, and so the script do have a particular place of their own nearby. It's very near to the entrance of this cave. Um, and I guess you only get access to it either through the story or through dynamic events in the area, which I never came across. Um, and it's just up at that undiscovered point of interest there. So we'll uh, go. So that will be the end of the, the map completion. The Amobes are kind of annoying, but they remind me of Orr, so... And I liked, sort of... Actually, I didn't like Orr when it originally came out, but now I wish it was the way it originally was, because I'm a foolish gamer, and I don't know what I really want. So, we'll go through the gate up there, and you'll see it's closed again. That The dynamic event blocking us off has already restarted. So, there's a good chance you guys will have to fight this dude, too, when you're coming down here for your own Feel story. The fury. I summon the power of Earth. <laughs> You notice the turrets don't actually do that much damage when they hit you, so it's not something you have to worry about. If my keybinds were set up here, I would burning retreat forward, but uh, it's not set up, so... <laughs> uh, but yeah, the secret area is just around here on the right. But here I realise, even though I can't go inside, I can probably activate the point of interest by going underneath. Which is exactly what I did. Uh, and yeah, the, the gate is shut. So, lots of script defending it, and you can even see some script when you peek inside. I do have a weird idea that maybe you can get in from above. But maybe the idea is it's the drawbridge is meant to be up. If this is a, a, a more advanced, better version of Scriptsville eventually, I'll be really happy. Here's the dune I was talking about a while ago. You should just be able to walk up the t that terrain, surely. But, you know, it's, it's fiddly. It's more frustrating to play than to watch, gladly. Well, st stuff like that is pretty frustrating. But that's all down to the lag. I mean, it's because I'm in combat with this single script lobber. And as ever with Guild Wars 2, you try and ignore that they exist. And then eventually you give up. And the second you give up and decide you're going to fight the damn thing, it breaks combat for you. Look at that. So typical. So I have to kill him, and then I have to kill his turret, and then we get up. Um, but yeah, so we're coming right up to the end of the video here, guys. So thanks very much for watching. Um, it's been a different kind of thing, so you have to let me know, like... This is almost like a let's play, except 
Uh, I'm being deliberately quiet every now and then when I don't have something to say, so you guys can just enjoy the ambience of the map. Tell me if you like it, if you prefer this to what I did last week, um, and we'll just sort of see how it goes, I guess. Maybe I'll refine it again next time. I mean, I could literally just let's play the whole damn thing and be like, here's my first impressions. But uh, I, I feel weird about doing stuff blind. I don't know. I feel weird. So maybe the post commentary is better. In any case, there you go, guys. That is the new areas of Dry Top. Not the entire patch by a long way because of the story. But that's some of the stuff you can experience for yourself. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Hope you have fun, guys.